I hate this thing. Tell everyone. I hate this thing. Oh shit. Where's that chicken? Fried and I hate you. Hey guys, welcome back to a new episode of the Coach's Corner. Full crew, full house today. Ah, Steve's back. Back. Back from the Bahamas. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's good. <laughs> no, one day. <laughs> uh, nice outfits. Oh. Plug. <laughs> I, didn't get the, I didn't get the black memo, but it's alright. That's alright. Ne next episode. You need to be in the middle, so then it's so nice. Great. You break it up. Yeah. I got the same dump list. Do you want to see this? What? I hate this thing. Oh, that's all off. I thought it was a good excuse for you, Luke. I hate that thing. That's why Link is like this. How does this work? I don't know how this works. How do you sit? Yeah. I reckon the corner one will be okay. Nah, it just looks comfy. You've got the most amount of room to sit. I locked it. Nah. I'll let Steve have that one today. I don't like it. Too bad. Should have went away, Luke. Yeah. Watch your spot. As soon as you lose. Alright, let's get into the questions. These are the questions that you've sent to us through our Instagram page, Squat Club AU. So next week, get your questions in and we'll have them answered for you. Uh, hey guys, I'm finding it hard to stay motivated to train during winter. How can I stay motivated? Thanks. Well, you kind of, motivation doesn't last very long, so I think you want to just be forming good habits to begin with. Like if you're already not training and you're like, oh yeah, I'm gonna start training in winter, it might be a little bit harder. Um, and I guess you just gotta look at it from a health point of view. Like it's important to get training and most people are gonna be like, oh, summer's coming up and they haven't trained all winter, then they're just gonna be scrambling towards summer and they're gonna be like trying to lose all this weight so fast and then just cycle that repeats itself week, like year after year. So I think if you can just get in a good habit of looking after your health and not thinking like, oh, I need motivation or like, I think that's the, that should be the goal. Um, even if you just can't get for two sessions a week or you don't have to go for five, like, just be realistic with yourself, what you're gonna do. I think that's probably the most important thing mm. for, to begin with anyway. But people still probably want a couple of little quick hints so <laughs> knock some out. <laughs> well, that's what I was gonna say, build habits. So, yeah. say if you train in the morning right now, I set the, the AC to turn on like 10 minutes before my alarm's on, so it's already warm, so I can get out of bed. That's, that's a bit uh, that's like a, a problem strategy. that most people have, but um, building habits, so like just, when you're in that habit, so just like, even if you don't feel like doing it, if you just like, put on your gym clothes, just do that, that's one step, and then it'll roll on. Before you know it, you just, uh, you're in your gym clothes, you get, you get in the car, and then you're at the gym. So just building that habit, just make it not seem like a chore anymore, so yeah. yeah. That's yeah. a big thing. I also think setting setting up uh, short term goals will help. Like if you got a goal to look good for summer, it's not the best goal. Um, just get smart goals and short term. So even in the winter, you'll still be motivated to keep to kick those goals. And then get you to that long term yeah. goal. So yeah, if you exactly. just if you just say oh, I'm going to chase summer body, like you just you're not going to get there. Yeah. Like you need something small, yeah. like you said, yeah. Yeah. specific. Yeah. I think like you said, like it's forming good habits. You know and, and and motivation comes within. So if you can try and find um, a smaller goal, like Lekka said, or finding like good habits, and yeah, that's going to help you. Um, I think a little trick for me, because you know we're all human. We've all become like, oh, I'm not not motivated to train. I know like, you were like that, like last week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even last week. You were. Um, I I've been like that, and I, I'm like that. You know, sometimes recently, um, but I have a hot shower. And a hot shower kind of helps me because I'm cold. So get into a hot shower and then I'm ready to go with the workout. Or um, you know, if you're doing it in the morning, I would wake up to go and have a hot shower and then have your workout clothes ready to go, or have like a pre-workout beforehand. Um, you know, by, by your bedside or you know, depending on the time. <laughs> Just ready to go. Alarm, <laughs> bang, down it. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, caffeine. You know, that's also a good little um, stim. Uh, I think so. Yeah, yeah. Like set two days in, like say if you're going to start with two days, like pick those days and set them in and be like, okay, this is my time to do it. Because if you don't have those days set, you're like, oh, I'll do it tomorrow, I'll do it tomorrow, yeah. and then you don't end up doing it. Yeah. Yeah. But if you go, all right, these are my two days, you know, do things like get your clothes ready or get your pre-workout and whatnot, get that routine that you've got it, so then your habits are there for those days. Yep. So set them in to your week. I think another good one would be accountability. 
no, I don't and investment. Want. So where then you would have a coach. You know, you see a lot of people that would, you know, that or clients over ourselves that they wouldn't have the accountability if they were being by themselves training consistently throughout a whole year. So I think, you know, if you're in a position to be able to have the accountability to invest in uh, a coach, you know, that is extremely, extremely it helps um, a lot, yeah, helpful with, with that, with staying consistent and being motivated because then you have someone that you have to answer to. Um, you've got to turn off for their sessions, you've got to do the training sessions that they've built for you, you've got nutrition, if that's one of the other goals as well to, you know, to kind of um, keep on track. So um, I, we see it here all the time is, you know, if you, if you invest in, in a coach, um, you know, you are then accountable and then you keep your consistency, you know. So, um, yeah, that makes it sustainable too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's the biggest thing. Definitely. And if you train with one of us, you'll love it. <laughs> <laughs> you won't want to leave. <laughs> or even just like training here, like just the environment and being around everyone, you see all the usual that's people. Right, that's that, right, that's right. Even that will keep you accountable too. Change environment. Yeah. yeah. Find yeah. somewhere that, you know, that's going to motivate you yeah. and uplift you. Yeah. yeah. People have got similar that's goals. That's part of the enjoyment. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Squat club. <laughs> uh, okay. Hey, co- hey, coaches. There's no doubt there are a lot of supplements that are heavily marketed. What are some supplements that you would recommend to your clients? Yeah, a magnesium mm-hmm. for recovery um, and to help with sleep. So I would do magnesium and uh, say fish oil if they're not getting enough fish. Yeah. Um, maybe that's about it. Yeah. A protein if they are not getting enough protein. Um, diet yeah. but first recommend like food yeah or well, the word says it supplement so just supplement your diet yeah. yeah i'll probably say exactly the same mm. protein as well people struggle with eating protein it's good at the start and then um probably creatine heat, like we said it before i mean heat, it's well studied and then everything else is just like probably just wasting your money yeah yeah that's my feeling anyway yeah but i think that's why people lose sight of that the actual word supplement they don't even yeah, yeah that's, it's that's very it minimal yeah, get, get the core structure of your yeah. food and everything right first and, that, and your training right and that's when the results happen mm. Mm. what would you say for someone that doesn't enjoy eating healthy food like say people are like oh but I don't enjoy eating that I don't want to eat that <laughs> Go <up. Yeah. laughs> I'm just throwing it out there yeah. for anyone because they might be like oh but I don't want to eat that so it might be something Okay, will you tell them? Oh, you can, like, <laughs> I know someone like that. <laughs> um, so I say, try to get as much good food as possible. So try to choose the food you like, but good, better options. Um, and then I would probably suggest to get the grains in a powder to yeah. get that in. Yeah, like there are supplements and vitamins that you can substitute if there is something yeah. that you're missing in the, out of your diet. Um, you know, like what you're eating, like red meat. And that's very case by case. Like, yeah, you gotta, you gotta yeah. judge yeah. it off the first, yeah. and then yeah. you're like, uh, you don't want like, any fruit or vegetables, like, surely, you're like, come on, come on. <laughs> surely we can sneak one in there with the mashed potato. <laughs> Maybe it's just kind of. <laughs> we'll go back to when you were a toddler with mine in the bin. Yeah. Put the peas in. And yeah, I think it's case by case, like, very. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of time it's probably just like, lifestyle habits that they've built yeah. up from when they were kids. So younger, you know, yeah. Just kind of experiment and explore other options that you might, might have been exposed to, different ways of yeah. cooking or eating mm. this, and there might be other things that you do, you do yeah. like. So yeah. yeah, I think it's um, kind of like an uh, attitude thing. Yeah. Like, yeah. Bit, you know, well, so. yeah, definitely. Uh, lifting straps with deadlifts, yes or no? By the way, big fan of you guys and what you promote, you never miss an episode. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> Straps? Do you give them to the clients? I don't. I don't. What for? Like, okay, it's gonna get you a bit more weight. I guess it's more of an ego thing. In my opinion, like, can you use straps for powerlifting? No. You can't use straps for powerlifting. It's just like, but in saying that, yeah. most of the clients are not powerlifters. Yeah, it depends on your dog. Yeah, I think it depends. But like, why would you give them straps? Why? Like, what's, what's a good route? Like, a valid reason for using straps. Volume. Building increase volume. As a, yeah, as a if yeah, your strength is depends on your goals. Reduce. So if you're getting in like enough work, like quality work where you are just you know using your grip and fine, and then if you have enough you know room in your program, you can supplement 
some extra volume using straps. You know, where oh, I would always promote no straps. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I think yeah. you know, it's I don't think it's a bad thing to incorporate that if someone needs that. Yeah. So it might be something that you put in occasionally, but not something that you yeah yeah yeah. You can use it as a supplement or you know add it in here and there, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, there are exercises that you can do to help increase your grip strength. Yeah. Um, but, like, sometimes, you know, you guys can apply to that, you know, they, they tend to lose their grip before, you know, their strength is gone. So, I mean, I think instances, instances like that, um, you, could, you could add that, yeah. you know. But I think, like, every, like we said, like, every, every answer, like, there's no That's black and white. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, it has its time and place. Yeah. So, for example, like, like what Ash said, as from overweight say I'll do I'll often work up to like say my heavy sets working sets where I am just you know holding the bar and then I'll move on to some volume work up of that and then you know the hands are a bit fatigued and just to be able to get the volume in I'll chuck straps on and mm. it's away it's you know it's supplementary work to like the the main sets I've already done so in that case I think it's okay yeah but um just I think just as long as it's not a crutch where you're using it for yeah, purely everything yeah yeah, yeah. Depends on the population you're doing with, like general fault. Yeah. Like, yes. like it'll be okay. Yeah. Mm. I guess that's where yeah, I was kind of thinking. Your training age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Your training age. Yeah, yeah. You're lifting heavy weights. Yeah. That's, yeah. yeah. If you're beginning, then yeah, just yeah. hold on to the bar. Like, you should have the capacity yeah. to do that. Yeah. 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 If you can't, then the weight's too heavy for you right now. Yeah. You know, work up to it later on. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Depends. So depends. Mm. Okay. Uh, in a fat loss phase, should I be changing my training to higher reps? I, I don't think so. Like, you have had to go from, you're always doing like between 8 and 15, what, you go to 20? It's only not, like, it's not going to make a massive yeah. difference. I think the same principles apply. Of just normal weight training, whether you're doing fat loss or you're doing. Yeah. It more depends on what phase are you in the actual training. training. yeah. You look at it from not training. If you are in the fat loss phase or mm-hmm. yeah. walking phase. Like, yeah. it depends on what phase are you in training. Yeah, yeah, I guess, yeah. Training. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. I guess the main goal with that, and the main focus with, the, I mean, being in the fat loss phase is being in a calorie deficit. So, making sure that you're, you know, increasing the gap between energy burned and, and calories consumed. That'd be a big part. Not so much about the repetitions of, of the weights. Yeah, I guess if you just increase the lap pull down from 10 to 15, that's not going to like mm. make you lose body yeah. fat. You just look at different strategies like maybe cardio or like, you know what I mean, like those yeah. types of strategies. That's probably the best option. Yeah. <coughs> yep. Um, when I train lower body, I struggle to feel my glutes um, and I feel more activation in my quads. Why is this and what can I do to feel my glutes work? Uh, so I think probably, yeah, to, to do act, like activation work before mm-hmm. the actual workout. I try and pull the weight back too. So pull the mm-hmm. weight back, go slower reps um, and concentrate on the glutes to try and get that mind uh, muscle connection yeah. happening. So you're not just going heavy weights going through momentum with it so mm. getting more activation through it um yeah obviously more quad dominance so you're trying to work on your glutes more glute activation do you have any what about what, like, what type of drills are you guys doing um for glute activation um i mean like i'm talking about that i find um clams good because um that don't really, you're not going to get much quad yeah. through there like yeah. Yeah. Clams. Uh, yeah they're pretty good um i think for me so i've got that problem at the moment um i feel my quads more than my back and everything so my glutes are not working um, and yeah climbs are the only ones that make them work. I find too like a um, hip press but getting my clients to extend one leg out and trying to keep their hips stable as well but making sure the weight's through the, the heels and that can help with pelvic stability and keeping the hips active on both sides so they have to recruit both when you're extending one leg out and then the other. Mm. Like a glute bridge? Yeah, like oh, a yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, definitely mm. good ones. Mm. There's heaps you can do. Yeah. Mm. Lateral band walks, like yeah. anything like that. Um, just look at the function of the, gl- the glutes, what they do. And most of the exercises will swing with that anyway. Another one I find too actually is like, say if you have the squat rack and you put the band across, um, what are those things called? The Racks, the hooks, hooks oh, that's one, yeah. So if you're putting a band along there and then just get them kneeling and pushing into the band, so doing like a hip thrust into the band yeah. because you're taking the knee out, they just have to extend through their hips and I find that's a really good one to teach the hip hinge. Are they on their knees? Yeah, on their okay. knees, yeah, so they don't need yeah. Because you know a lot of people will struggle with 
like they'll the use their yeah, knees. Yeah, yeah. So if you take the knee movement out and then they're only using their hips to extend, yeah, and I find that the yeah, yeah. thrust yeah. into the back, mm. and I find that, and even a hold at the um, the end of the movement because they're pushing their hips forward, I find that a good drill to teach um, hip extension and glute activation. Mm. Because yeah, if you if your if your knees involved, the quads cross the knee. It's just anatomy. So if you take out the knee, you're just using the hip, like what extends the hip, yeah. the glutes. Yeah. That's why you gotta look at it. Um, that's why the clam's good. They're not you're not using your knee yeah. for that. A glute bridge, you actually might find you might actually use your quads more because you're actually into a little bit of knee extension anyway. But that's when you that's a good screening tool as well actually. The glute bridge. Yeah, so. especially if you do single leg glute bridge and hold at the top. That's where you're gonna feel what muscle you're using the most. Yeah. So that's probably the best. Um, Good screen too. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Bring the weight down as well, like Ab said. Focus on form, stretch of the muscle and, yeah. and contraction. Understand the anatomy there and what what you're actually trying to do. So getting those hips through, yep. peel weight back, do some tempo, and then because you know otherwise you probably are ingrained like your quads to take over all the time. So you got to peel it back and teach your body to. Use your quads and your glutes together. Yeah, yeah. So I hope that helps. Um, there's some good tips there. Um, that's it. Five questions. Well done, guys. Good job. Any messages to the fans? Nick's got a dare. No, no dare. Nothing. SQ athlete. <laughs> On sale now. <laughs> Cool. All right, let's wrap it up. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you have any questions for our next episode, then shoot them through to our Instagram page, Squat Club AU, and then we'll see you guys next week. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> it sounded like that was like a pre-recorded thing when you're saying. I was say it every week. Yeah. <laughs> if you have any questions, feel free to. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs>